group 16 elements have a six electrons in their valence shell. Selenium which occurs as a metal selenides and whereas terenium will occurs as metal terenides. The polonium it does not show the plus six oxidation state because of inert pair effect. Oxygen will exist in a two form that is oxygen as well as with the ozonide. Hello my dear students, a warm welcome you all. Myself is Purdima, lecturer in Department of Chemistry at Vidyashram Pre University College, Temple of Excellence, Mysore. My dear students, in our last discussion, we were dealing with the unit called P block elements. Under this unit, we have discussed about the white and yellow phosphorus. That is, in detail about the phosphorus we have learned. In that, there are three types will be there. That is white, red and black phosphorus we have learned. In addition to this, we have also learned about the compounds of phosphorus. That is, phosphine and phosphorus halides also we have learned. And also we have learned about phosphorus pentachloride that is a uh, one of the compounds of phosphorus and also we have learned about oxo acids of phosphorus today let us move on to the next topic of this unit by understanding the group 16 elements in the periodic table so we are going to understand what are the group 16 elements in the periodic table their electronic configuration occurrence oxidation state trends in physical and chemical property we are going to understand in this session. First we will see what are group 16 elements. So as we all see that periodic table we know that group 16 which are falling P block elements and we generally call this group 16 as calcogens or oxygen family. And also if you see that members of the group 16 the first element is oxygen, hence it is known as oxygen family or calcogen. It is known as oxygen family or calcogen. Next is sulfur, selenium, terillium and polonium. These are the group 16 elements which are falling. So, hope you all understood with the members which are falling only the group 16. So, they are known as what? Oxygen family or calcogen. Okay. So, the group 16 in the periodic table, it is also known as what? Oxygen family. It includes the elements like oxygen, sulfur, selenium, tellurium and polonium and this is also known as what? Calcogens. Okay. And all these elements have a six electrons in their valence shell which indicates that first if I take a oxygen the electronic configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p4 okay this is a valence shell that is in a 2s and 2p which consists of six electron in the valence shell where in the valence shell it has six electron this is a speciality of group 60 if you consider all these elements okay the oxygen sulfur selenium and terallium as well as the polonium all these elements have a six electrons in their valence shell okay and the elements of oxygen and sulfur are common well as while the selenium, terillium and polonium are also comparatively rare. The last member polonium is a radioactive element. It is radioactive and except this oxygen and sulfur all these elements are rare. Okay, and like other groups, okay, the first element of the oxygen is different from their characteristics with the other rest of the elements. That is why in this group 16, you are going to understand more about the oxygen and sulfur and rest of the elements you are not going to study in detail. 
ok only more about the oxygen itself we are going to understand we will see the electronic configurations of group 16 elements already i have informed that the group 16 elements have a six electrons in their valence shell let us see how does it consist of six electron with the other rest of the elements first i'll go with the oxygen it has atomic number 8 and it has a electronic configuration of 2 and 6 and the inert core if you write that is helium 2s2 and 2p4 you can see that in the valence shell it consists of 6 electron okay similarly i'll go with the sulfur the atomic number of sulfur is 16 and it's our electronic configuration of 286 okay and the inert gas configuration if you write so it can be written as neon 3s2 3p4 again you can see that this is a valence shell and it consists of how many electron six electron okay then coming into the selenium it has a atomic number 34 and the electronic configurations will be 2 8 18 and 6 and inert gas configurations will be goes like this the organ 3d10 4s2 4p6 and hence this is the last shell which consists of six valence electron coming into the tellarium which consists of 52 as their atomic number and electronic configurations will be 2 8 18 and 6 and it has a inert gas configuration of krypton 3d10 5s2 5p4 again this is a valence shell which consists of six electron coming into the polonium which has atomic number 84 and the electronic configurations will be goes like this 8 2 8 18 32 18 and 6 and the inert gas configurations will be zen on 4f 1 to 14 5d10 6 s2 6p4 this again indicates that this is a valence shell which consists of six electron you can see that all these elements and their valence shell electronic configuration i have written all this element has six electron in their valence shell this is a speciality of group 16 elements in the six valence electron okay the p orbital which consists of four electron in that you can see that the NPX which consists of two electron whereas NPY and NPZ which consists of only one one electron okay in order to get a stable electronic configuration either it has to gain two electron either it has to involve that four electron which is there in the p block to form a bond formation this is how it shows a different uh, variable oxidation state due to the six electrons in their valence shell and also if you see that electronic configuration as we move down the group you can see that number of the shells which is also going to be increased and all the shells which is going to be filled right for oxygen it is two first shell is filled the second shell is consists of six electron whereas in the sulfur the first two shells which is filled whereas the third one which consists of six electron as we move down the group you can see that number of the shells which is completely filled like one 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 two one one two two three and one two three four again one two three four five you can see that on this number of shells which is completely filled whereas the valence shell which consists of only the six electron and hence it is known as what oxygen family or calcogen okay next is all about the occurrence we'll understand what are the occurrence of this group 16 elements in the nature as we are already know that oxygen is a most abundant elements in the periodic table it present around 20.95% of oxygen by volume. In terms of mass, if you say, the oxygen will be present around 46.6% of the earth crust by its mass. Okay. This is a one thing that we need to be remember because we know that all living organisms, they require oxygen for their breathing purposes. Right. So, 
This oxygen is also one of the important elements for all living organisms to their survivability. That is why it is known as another important abundant gas in the atmosphere and it is present around 20.95% by its volume. Coming into the sulphur. So, sulphur which exists in earth crust but it is in very small quantity around 0.03% to 0.1% and it is also present in combined state. For example, if you take the gypsum, the formula is calcium sulphate where you can see the sulphur. Similarly, in the epsom salt which consists of sulphur in the form of magnesium sulphate. Similarly, the barium sulphate that is byrite etc. And also the sulphide which is occurs in zinc blende and also with the galenia that is PBS and copper pyrates that is CuFeS2. It also present in a combined as well as in the free state and as well as in the sulphide form. Not only it present in a combined form, the sulphur which is also present in the egg, proteins, garlic, onion as well as in the mustard as we are using in our daily life. Coming into the other elements of this group that is selenium which occurs as a metal selenides and whereas terillium will occurs as metal terillides and polonium which is occurs in decay product of thorium as well as with the uranium product hence it is known as radioactive elements. It is known as what? A radioactive result. It is present in the decay product of thorium and uranium. This is all about the occurrence of group 16 elements in the periodic table. Next coming to the oxidation state. After understanding their electronic configurations and their occurrence, it is very important to know that oxidation state and we have understood that it consists of 6 electrons in their valence shell and the general electronic configurations of this valence shell is ns2, np4, right, ns2, np4. Hence, we can say that it shows minus 2, plus 2, plus 4 and plus 6 oxidation state, okay. For example, if you take the oxygen, it has 8 electron. In the valence shell, it consists of 6 electron. Either it will gain the 2 electron to get a stable electron configuration. Either it involves all the 4 electrons to form a bonding with other elements. This is how it forms a stable electronic configurations of 8, okay. Then oxygen does not show the plus 6 oxidation state due to the absence of d orbital. How it will be? If you write the electronic configurations of oxygen that is 1s2, 2s2, 2p4, right? So, in the valence shell, it consists of 6 electron. Whereas, if you consider this 2s, if it is goes in the excited state also, there is no availability of d orbital to form a unpaid electron. That is why due to this absence of the d orbital, this oxygen will not form a plus 6 oxidation state. Instead of this, it can also show plus 2, minus 2 or plus 4 oxidation state. Okay, the polonium does not show the plus 6 oxidation state due to the inert pair effect. So, first I will write the elements of group 16. Okay, group 16 first is oxygen, sulfur, selenium, terillium, and last is polonium. Right, so if you see that all these elements in the group 16, all these elements have 6 electrons in their valence shell, right? Valence shell and in the valence shell, we know that it has 6 electrons. I am talking about only the polonium. As we know that polonium will also have a 6 electrons in their oxidation state, the 6 electron in that 2s2, 2p4. In that, as we move down the group, you know, this 2s2 electrons will become inert. What does it mean? Which means that as we move down the group, this 
2s electrons which consists of 2 electron will does not involved in a bonding at all it does not involved in bonding with other element and it has become completely inert and this effect we call it as inert pair effect we call it what inert pair effect due to this inert pair effect as we move down the group this plus 4 oxidation state increases whereas plus 6 oxidation state will be going to be decreased so that is why the polonium it does not shows a plus 6 oxidation state because of inert pair effect okay and the stability of minus 2 oxidation state decreases down the group due to the increasing in atomic size and decreasing in the electronegativity. And oxygen shows minus 2 oxidation state in general except in OF2, O2, F2 as well as in the H2O2 that is hydrogen peroxide. In all these elements you can see that it does not show the minus 2 as a oxidation state. That is why we can say that finally the stability of this plus 6 oxidation state decreases down the group because of inert pair effect and plus 4 oxidation state going to be increased. This is a trend in the group 16 elements as we move down the group. As we move down the group, what will happen to their oxidation state? The plus 6 oxidation state will be going to be decreased because of the inner pair effect where the NS2 electrons well does not involved in a bonding hence it become inert due to this inert pair effect the plus 6 oxidation state will be decreases whereas the plus 4 oxidation stability will be increased okay then coming into their trends in their physical property the first physical property is atomic and ionic radius what does it mean? We all know that atomic radii which is nothing but a distance from the center of the nucleus to the outermost shell. As we move down the group, already we have understood that number of shells which is also going to be increased. As the number of shells which is increases, the distance from the center of the nucleus to the outermost shell which is also going to be increased. Hence, this atomic radius will be going to be increased as we move down the group. Okay, as we move down the group, what will happen to the atomic radii? It has to be increased because of the number of shells. Coming into the ionization enthalpy. We all know that ionization enthalpy is nothing but the energy required to remove the electron from its outermost shell. As we move down the group, number of shells are increases so that it is easier to remove the electrons which is there in the outermost shell. Hence, this ionization energy which is also be decreases down the group. Due to the increasing in the number of shells, what will happen? It is not very easy to remove the number of electrons in the outermost shell. Hence, this ionization energy will be decreases. But if you compare group 15 to group 16, okay, the ionization enthalpy of group 16 is lower than that of the group 15. That is mainly because this group 15 has half filled orbital. It has what? Half filled orbital. Hence, it is not very easy to remove the electron. Hence, the group 16 has lower ionization energy as compared with the group 15. But according to the trend, as we move along the period from left to right, this ionization energy has to be increases from left to right. But if you consider only the group 15 to group 16, the ionization enthalpy of group 16 is lower than that of the group 15 because of half filled orbitals. Half filled orbitals due to this you know it shows what lower ionization enthalpy okay coming into the electronegativity so if you see that group 16 elements it consists of oxygen sulfur then selenium terylium and polonium okay except fluorine okay oxygen has highest electronegativity among the all the elements and the electron negativity will be again decreases with increasing atomic number. 
Coming into their electron gain enthalpy. What is this electron gain enthalpy? Electron gain enthalpy means even though it consists of six electrons in their valence shell, if you add few more electrons to get a stable electron configuration, what does the energy which is released if you add the electron? If the atoms gain the electron, how much of the energy will be released during that process? We call it as electron gain enthalpy. So oxygen has less electron gain enthalpy when compared with the sulfur because of the smaller size of oxygen. So if you see that oxygen with the sulfur, oxygen has very less electron gain enthalpy as compared with the sulfur because of the smaller size. And from sulfur to polonium, electron gain enthalpy which also become less negative and because of the increasing in atomic radiate. As we move down the group, this electron gain enthalpy become less and less negative. Okay. This is how we can easily remember the trends in the group 16 elements. We have further trends that is metallic and non-metallic characters. Okay. Their metallic characters will be going to be increased with increasing in atomic number. Oxygen and sulfur, we know that it is a non-metal. Whereas selenium and terillium as metalloids, polonium is a metal. Okay. This metallic characters which also going to be increases down the group. As we move down the group, the metallic characters increases. Okay. Then coming into the allotropy, you can see that oxygen will exist in a two form that is oxygen as well as with the ozonide. Similarly, the sulfur will exist in rhombic, monoclinic, plastic and amorphous. Selenium will be exist in two form that is red form and gray form. Red form is known as non-metallic whereas the gray form is known as metallic. Coming into the terillium, it is a crystalline and amorphous form will be there. Whereas polonium will be in the form of alpha and beta because both are metallic and it is radioactive. Okay, this is the allotropy forms of the group 16. Coming into the melting point and boiling point. Again, this melting point and boiling point, which is going to be increases as we move down the group. Okay, gradually increases with increasing in atomic number. Coming into the trends in their chemical property. First, I'll go with the anomalous behavior of oxygen. If you see the group 16 elements, first is oxygen, sulfur, selenium, terillium and polonium. Already I have told that oxygen and sulfur you are going to study in detail. If you see that oxygen, it looks different from the other rest of the elements because of the following anomalous behavior. One thing is we know that oxygen has very small size, right? Because of very small size and also the increasing in electron negativity because of the high electron negativity and also if you consider the oxygen there is no involvement of d orbital there is no involvement of d orbital if you write the electronic configuration due to these three important characters you can see that the oxygen will be looks different from the other rest of the element and these are the important properties of the group 16 elements about the oxygen. So for your examination they can ask you why oxygen will be different from the group 16 of the other rest of the element. The answer is because of the smaller size and increasing in electronegativity and also because of the absence of d orbital the oxygen which looks different from the other rest of the element. And also coming into the trends, first I'll go with the reactivity with the hydrogen. If you see that group 16 elements, when it is react with the hydrogen, it can easily form a hydride. So I can show with the oxygen, okay. So oxygen, if it is reacting with the hydrogen, okay, it forms what? H2O. Similarly, you can take sulfur reacting with hydrogen and forms a hydride and forms what? Hydride. 
This indicates that this group 16 elements, when it is reacting with the hydrogen, it forms a hydride of type H2M. What is M stands here? Element. So it can easily form a hydride and you can see that water, hydrogen sulfide and hydrogen selenium, terylium as well as with the polonium. Okay. Coming into their covalent characters. Okay. As the electronegativity differs between the metal and the hydrogen, decreases the covalent hydrate, increases from water to the terylium. So, from the oxygen, sulfur, selenium, terylium to the polonium, this covalent characters will be also going to be increased. Coming into the acidic characters, due to their formation of hydrogen with the metal bond okay the hydrogen and with the e stands for metal here or element you can say okay because of hydrogen metal bond the length will be increases down the group so that the bond dissociation energy will be decreases down the group as we move down the group what will happen atomic number will be increases so that bond length which is also increases obviously it is very easier to break the bond okay hence this bond dissociation energy will be going to be decreases with increasing in bond length and thermal stability if you see that this is because of again the hydrogen and element bond length will be increases down the group and also the bond dissociation energy will be decreases and you can see that thermal stability how does it will be decreases and also coming into their reducing property because of again bond between the hydrogen as well as with the elements you know the bond length will be increases as we move down the group so that the bond length will be increases down the group it is easier to break that bond hence their reducing nature will be also get decreases down the group coming into their properties of this hydrides okay all these elements form a larger number of halides of the type mx2 mx4 and ms6 so here m stands for element it may be oxygen sulfur selenium terylium and polonium and x stands for fluorine chlorine bromine and iodine okay these are the halogens okay the stability of the halides decreases in the order of fluorine chlorine bromine and iodine because of the ex bond length will be increases with increasing in atomic number and the exa halides are become most stable because of steric hindrance if you see that halide formation it forms ex2 or e x4 and ex6 this hexa halides are become more stable in that hexa fluoride okay it is more stable as it is compared with the rest of the elements okay either with the bromine or with the iodine or with the chlorine you know among this the hexa fluorides is more stable because of the steric hindrance what is that steric hindrance here again if you consider the oxygen only okay we know that this is a nucleus and it consists of two electrons and in the outermost shell which consists of four electrons we know that in order to get a stable electronic configuration either it has to gain a two electron mode during this process if you add one more electron to this what will happen this electron which are become more stable especially the fluorine is smaller in the size because of the smaller size of the halides you know it forms a steric hindrance hence it is more stable and dihalides are sp3 hybridized so that it forms a tetrahedral in shape and hexafluorides are generally stable halides which are gases and it has sp3d2 hybridization and it can form what octahedral structure coming into their reactivity with the oxygen so usually the oxygen can forms a 
EO2 and EO3 types of compound where again E stands for element. Okay. The reducing characters of dioxides decreases down the group because the oxygen atoms are become stronger positive field which attracts the hydroxyl group and removal of the H plus ions are become more easy and also we have learned that the acidic characters which is going to be decreases because of the increasing in bond length and also if you see that sulfur if I take it can form sulfur dioxide and sulfur trioxide. If you take selenium okay it can form selenium dioxide and selenium trioxide also is that yes but if you consider the dioxides forms of the sulfur and selenium this is gas and this is a solid why the selenium dioxide is solid it consists of chain polymeric structure so due to the chain polymeric structure the entire structure of selenium dioxide it become more more stronger because of the stronger chain polymeric structure again it will be exhibits as metallic in the nature hence it will be a salt okay this is how this elements can also react with the oxygen and forms a dioxide and trioxide form in the next session we are going to understand more about the dioxygen or with the oxygen their preparations and the property we are going to understand by this we have learned that how this group 16 are more important to study for your board exams i'll meet you with the next session till that take care be safe thank you